Hey, what's up? This is the Flyover Libertarian Podcast, where two unimportant people from an unimportant place give you the opinion that you didn't ask for. I'm Josh, a.k.a. Ioan Cap. And I'm the Rural Rothbard. Today we're riffing off of a recent flyby that Ioan Cap recorded. So the, uh, the topic is, but will you use a gun? Murder, abortion, and libertarianism. So you're a, you're a conservative Christian normie. Yeah, absolutely. That means you don't think abortion is right. But would you use a gun to enforce it? Yeah. Every, every stinking time, right? Um, so I'm pretty active on a bunch of Christian libertarian page, uh, or groups. And every stinking time the topic comes up, some guy thinks he's being the perfect purist by being like, well, you guys are against abortion, but are you going to use a gun to stop it? And, and in some ways, honestly, the abortion stops being the point at that point, right? Like, it really is just like, so, uh, the assumption is that if at any point you are using force to stop something, you're a bad libertarian, Yeah, right? Yeah, as if the point is to not use a gun. Yeah, yeah. That's what the non-aggression principle is, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's interesting how everyone becomes uh everyone becomes a libertarian pacifist at the point that abortion comes up. Um <laughs> and and yeah, that is really what I um what what I was trying to get at in this flyby and um um uh, by the way, we haven't talked about flybys. Like uh maybe you should let people know. Um Flybys are a little something that we started putting out uh, recently. They're shorter episodes, 10, 15 minutes max. You know, we're, I'm aim, aiming for around 10 minutes a piece. And the point of those is if you have friends who you want to introduce to our podcast, that those would be good episodes to introduce them to. Like they're, they're short, they're concise, they're, um, less meat and potatoes, more overview. And you can share this with them to kind of give them a flavor for our podcast. And, and also that if you are a new podcast listener, you can go back and listen to those and say, wait, is this something that I really want to dedicate to? Um, as a po- if I want to keep listening to this podcast, cause there are hundreds of libertarian podcasts out there. And, uh, you know, it's uh, sometimes it can be hard to decide which ones that you want to stick with. Um, but that's what these flybys have been really short ish, uh, episodes, hopefully evergreen, hopefully things that can be talked about forever, um, that are going to give you a flavor for our thoughts and for our podcast. Um, so that's what that is. And on this flyby, well, it was inspired by, like I said, this, this sense that every time you bring up abortion, well, it's okay for you to be against abortion, but are you going to use force to prevent it? Um, and I would say, Yes. I'm fine with that. So who would be tasked with using a gun to enforce that? Um, you know, this is, I would say, where it gets harder. Um, in another flyby, uh, uh, state versus government, um, I talked about how the way we react to government enforcing morality now needs to reflect the way we see it going in our in-cap society. So it's not that in an anarcho-capitalist society there will not be law enforcement. There will be. Um, For one thing, there will be the law enforcement of protecting your own property. Like that is the law of this is my property and what I do and what happens on my property, I am in control of that, will be enforced by me with a gun. (laughs) So I guess for one thing, you can't have an abortion on my property. So that would be one one simple answer to that, but uh, but also there will be, um, you know, ha- Hans Hermann Hoppe theorized that there will be covenant communities, and in these covenant communities, there will be kind of l- rules in addition to the non-aggression principle that the communities will gather around. And of course, if you agree to these rules and join this community because you agree to those rules, there will probably be some kind of a law enforcement division enforcing those rules. Um, before you say it, no, that doesn't make it a state because obviously in a covenant community like this, the rules will be easier to change by the people within it. Like you're, They're not going to just 
elect some dictator or some congress to pass the rules are going to be smaller communities so each individual can voluntarily submit more readily and also it's not a state because you can leave if you want and it's not the same thing as having to fly thousands of miles away to a different country you can just get up and leave the community and you you lose out on the benefits of the community but you also no longer have to follow their rules um this is it's a voluntary community um but they will enforce those laws including probably the laws of private property and uh not murdering or aggressing against someone else's person and uh and in this, so in this perfect world, there will still be law enforcement. There will still be a government arm, even in an anarcho-capitalist society. The issue is with the state. But the fact that we live under a state means we have to deal with state as a situation. Like, as a, as a fact that there is a state that claims the monopoly of coercive violence, well, there are some things that they still should... Uh, there are some things that they should enforce. If the state decides to enforce that no one should murder, I don't have a problem with that. Right. Rulers are a, are a terror to bad conduct, right? Right, yeah. And they, if they want to enforce not stealing, we should be okay with that. That's kind of what they should be doing. Um, and so the question is, in a perfect world, who would enforce this you shall not murder of him of unborn i don't know i think this would be a probably a place where covenant communities would deal with it there probably would be certain covenant communities where um there is some sort of a moral um basis and they say you know if you abortion is is not justified it's it's really hard for me to see what would happen in this incap in incap world how would we enforce a ban on abortion um, it is hard. I and this is like, um, I don't want to say a weakness in my position, but a position where I think libertarian anarchists do need uh, libertarian anarchists who are against abortion do need to think about. So, what are we going to do um, to enforce it? Because, because you know, a lot of the times the response is, you know, well, we're going to set up incentives so that people won't abort their babies. Yeah, sure. Um, but, I mean, it's kind of like saying we're going to set up incentives for people not to murder each other. Fine, but what happens when they inevitably do? We do need to do something about that. There needs to be a way for um, the family of the victim to get retribution somehow. Uh, otherwise, it's, otherwise, it doesn't matter what incentives we set up. There is no reason for people not to murder each other if there's not some kind of negative incentive as well. Um, and so I guess that's where I'll, I'm just going to cards on the table. I would like to invite any libertarian uh, pro-life libertarian who's thought about this uh, to, I would love your feedback and I, cause I don't know how it's going to work, but I do know this, that as long as we live in a world where the state claims a monopoly of coercive force, the state should enforce this, a, a ban on abortion. I don't think it's unlibertarian for someone to support a law banning abortion I think that's kind of us telling the state that they're doing what they were actually supposed to be doing yeah you just want them to enforce laws against murder consistently yeah and yeah to get into why you think you know that's murder would would be a whole nother rabbit trail but yeah uh, starting with your position that's what that's what you're asking yeah yeah absolutely and this is that that is kind of uh um I guess I would like to invite my not pro-life libertarians, or I don't, I don't even like that phrase. I don't like pro-life. Um, not anti-abortion libertarians who are listening. Um, yeah, there's lots of pro-life people. That yeah, love assume war. for the yeah, assume for the purpose of the conversation our position, um, because I do think it's a helpful question to ask about, even just in general, about how will how will anarcho-capitalist society deal with murder, and how should the state deal with murder in light of our principles. Um, and, and abortion is just a really sticky issue of it that, that makes it, uh, brings up the conversation and makes it, um, I guess, a useful conversation. I think uh, some of the issues involved in it are going to be 
in general, how do you deal with murder? Um, and also to my um, not anti-abortion libertarian friends, you should be an anti-abortion libertarian. That's all. I'll, I'll just say that. <laughs> um, but yeah, and so, so yeah, I guess I this those are my thoughts. I don't know. I what what do you think, Rural Rothbard? Um, yeah. So basically, you're saying to to say it shouldn't be opposed by the state. That that isn't our argument. Is yeah. Saying. Because it's like within the current framework, you're you're arguing it should be enforced consistently, and in the ideal framework, you're saying it also needs to be. Enforced. Yeah, I guess I'm I'm more almost saying I'm not being inconsistent to say that I would support the government using a gun to stop abortion. If you want to have, I guess, if you want to have a fruitful argument about whether or not abortion is murder. Like you said, that's another issue. We can have that argument. Let's let's do it. But if abortion is murder as I think it is, then it's not inconsistent for me to say that the government should oppose it, that the, that the state should stop it. It's and and um, I'm going to deal with another thing, another objection I hear. Well, if abortion isn't legal. Then people are going to do it with coat hangers and in dark alleys. People are just going to make abortion in their bathtub. My response is good. Good. Like I'm sorry. Like the fact that people think that that's a valid argument against our position. I'm like, oh, that's where murder should happen. Murder should happen in back alleys. Like why? Why is it that like? Why is that considered an argument against my position that, like, well, people are going to do it anyway? Well, yeah, murder is illegal. People still kill people in back alleys as well. And and they're, like, saying, well, then if, if, if abortion is illegal, then, then mothers will risk their health to abort their children. Well, it should be a risk to murder someone. I don't, like, are you saying, like, because... If anything, that aligns the incentives yeah, better. Yeah, like, are you saying that because it's... You know what? If I try and murder my wife, there's a possibility she might fight back. Therefore, I should make killing my wife safe. That's that doesn't make sense. Of course, she should fight back. Like our, the human body is meant is is created in a way that once it is pregnant, it wants to bring that baby into a world, and you are rebelling against the nature of your body by aborting this baby. And so, for one thing, I'm I'm not certain that you're right that abortion is safe for the woman. Uh, like legal abortion is safe for the woman not convinced on that ground but also like it's just it's not a good argument to say well if we don't allow safe and legal abortion people are going to do it illegally and with and they're going to do it uh, in an unsafe manner well that's not an argument against my position my position is it's murder and so murder should happen in unsafe situations i don't want people to be safe when they're trying to murder someone it, it it's not a good argument yeah, I like that. Lines the incentives better. We wouldn't want to institutionalize mm -hmm. murder to be perfectly safe for one party. Mm -hmm. I mean, isn't that really the problem we have with drone warfare? Is that it it, it yeah. makes it too oh, easy geez, yeah. for governments to kill people. Like the problem with it, yeah. the, we, it's all of the it's all of the murder without any of the risk. Like honestly, that's that we we don't want war to be safer. We want people to have to count the cost before they go and and try and send another uh, another area into chaos. Um, I just it's it's not an argument. It's that's it's not a good argument because you're not. And I guess this is the really ultimately the biggest problem with. It anti-abortion arguments is nine times out of ten you're not actually dealing with the argument of the anti-abortionist and i mean not that's not all arguments some people do some people do deal with the arguments they're trying to make the argument that what is in the mother's womb isn't a life that needs to be protected um you know you've got walter brock blocks evictionism um you've got people who are just straight up no, it's fine because it's not a fully developed human being. And we, we can deal with those arguments on another occasion. Um, honestly, there's a, that's honestly a realm where I'm just not prepared, if I'm going to be honest, to debate. I know enough to be settled in my position, but not enough to defend it. You know, it's kind of like, uh, 
Like, I'm confident in the gun, I just don't know that I could aim it. That's sort of my, <laughs> my, my uh, it's where I am with, with, uh, with abortion and the science of abortion. I, I, I'm satisfied with the claims. Or I'm, I, I'm confident in the claims. I just don't know that I could wield it well. Um, and so I guess if you want to debate that, I can put you in contact with some people who are better prepared to, to argue it. Um, but I guess that's just the big thing. Yeah, you're not a medical doctor, so that's really the best yeah. you can do. Yeah, I'm just uh, can point you to one who's against abortion, though. A very, very great one named Ron Paul. Uh, <laughs> um, but but I my big thing is this is the area where I can deal with where I'm ready to deal with things is is on the philosophical level, and I think this argument it, it's just not a good one. And so if you're a a whether you're an anti-abortion or a pro, whether if you whether you're an anti-abortion libertarian who does think this is a good argument, I've seen some people who are like, they are saying like I'm personally against abortion, but I can't support the government using violence to defend or to defend my position. I'm going to say to you, have no fear, support away. It's it's perfectly legitimate for you to support this. This is perfectly in line with libertarian principles. And to say to those who who say because they are anti they are pro abortion those who want to say well you don't have uh you don't have any grounds to claim this on libertarian grounds to say well you're wrong i can i can on libertarian grounds defend the fact that i think the state should pass laws against abortion um the, your argument is is bad um and that's really all i had to say on this issue um yeah, basically, if they're going to claim the right to uh, monopolize force in a certain area, they need to at least enforce it consistently. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. And that's a perfectly libertarian thing to say. So, yeah. I don't have anything else to say. Do you have anything else to say? No, I think that's almost 20 minutes. Yeah, wow. we're going we're gonna to cut this one short because... Uh, um, because of uh, my conversation that went on super long with Isaac, we've got a couple more episodes, and so we're we're recording this in advance. Um, uh, and and we're in the middle of quarantine, and frankly, we're just uh, we're just a little tired today. So we're we're gonna cut this one short. Uh, I'm sure it's a great. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure that our five listeners will appreciate that having come off of an hour and a half conversation between me and Isaac. Uh, so we're gonna call this one early and uh, hopefully um, you're all staying safe. Hopefully by the time this podcast comes out, we've broken quarantine and gotten back to uh, to uh, pr- a productive economy. Though I'm, I'm a little worried about what the world's going to look like once we break quarantine, if we're going to be honest, but Maybe this podcast has come out and we're living in a perfect world and everything is fine. There's no COVID and everyone's back to, to work and producing like mad. And I had no reason to be afraid. Um, and everyone listening to this podcast can laugh at me. So <laughs> we printed more money and fixed everything. The end. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> oh, money printer go brrr. All right. <laughs> so we're going to bring this one to a close. Oh, I should probably also find my script for starting an episode. <laughs> uh, it's the same line. You'd think I'd memorize it by now, but I am the worst. <laughs> hey, what's up? This is the Fly for Libertarian podcast, where two unimportant people from an unimportant place give you the opinion that you didn't ask for. I'm Josh, a.k.a. Ioan Cap. And I'm the Rural Rothbard. Today, we're talking about guns almost no just kidding um <laughs> i was gonna try to turn that into a joke let's see i'm trying to figure out how to start this maybe like something like just riffing off of a recent flyby that iowa Cap posted or something like that yeah <laughs> that we haven't recorded yet they don't know that <laughs> yeah all right today we're